Good morning, this is Heather from WeddingsByHeather.com and the Flourish Academy. Today is Tuesday. I wanted to give you a quick tip. These videos are meant to just provide you with some information that I've covered in a recent mentoring session or a question that's come up quite often. Yesterday we talked about third-party lenses, whether or not I used Sigma or Tamra lenses. I do not use them, but I would like to test them. And my friend Mandy was over yesterday from Amanda Briscoe Photography. Make sure you check out her website. And she was kind enough to drop off her Tamron 70 to 200 2.8 lens. So I have this and I have the Nikon version of this lens, so I'm going to test them. I'm gonna put them on my D700s and I'm gonna take some photos outside, um, inside, low light, lots of light, fast moving, slow moving. Thank you, Mandy. I have the lenses here and I haven't been able to test them yet, meaning I have not mounted them on my camera. However, I just did something that I found really interesting. I weighed them. And now this information is readily available, but um, this lens, the Nikon 70-200, weighs 3.5 pounds, actually 3.56. So if you wanted to be technical, you could round that up to 3.6 pounds. And this was 2.12 pounds. I'm sorry, what? That is a full pound and some change less than this one. I found that very interesting because typically when lenses, I mean, it's the same lens, right? Slightly different construction, obviously. But when lenses are a few ounces off, maybe even up, up to six ounces off, you wouldn't really notice a difference when shooting. But I'm thinking that these two lenses, with those different weights, that, that's kind of a big deal to me. I obviously like the lighter lens because when you carry this around all day, it can be really hard on your shoulders and your body. Hmm, so that's interesting. I also noticed, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but Tamron doesn't do any kind of uh, vibration reduction or image stabilization, which is what Canon calls it, right? Is that correct? I mean, I don't see it on here. I'm just making sure I'm not missing it. That could account for part of the weight. Because this has vibration reduction, it has a motor that does this, right? Oh, it does now, Mandy says. Okay, so this version doesn't. I would be interested to see the weight difference in the new Tamron. I'll have to look that up. I find things like that fascinating. Uh, now, I'm gonna try to conduct this test as scientifically as possible using the same subject and the same camera body, but I'm not submitting this anywhere, so it'll go how it goes, and that's about it. Okay, so the quick, oh, let me read what Mandy says it didn't when she bought it, the VR version came out afterwards, yeah. That doesn't surprise me. Jennifer says she loves her Sigma version, did lots of comparison and research. Jen, will you weigh it or see what the weight, I'm just curious, weight matters when you're carrying it around all day at a wedding. Okay, so the quick tip today, Mara, good morning, thank you, because this includes you. Yesterday on the video that I had done last week um, entitled, Should I Blog? My friend Ginger Snap Photo, which she is actually a real person. I know it sounds like spam, but she has to remain private for other issues. But anyway, she is a real person and she is delightful. But anyway, she commented on that video yesterday and asked what she should blog about if she doesn't have any content because she's only been photographing for friends and family and e even so, not that much. And so Mara replied, so go check out that reply. But it was really good because the truth of the matter is, and Leanne says the same thing, you can blog about anything. Just blog something. Now presumably, if you're a photographer and you're wanting to get into photography, you take a lot of photos. You can blog those photos even if they're not necessarily directly relevant to your market at this time because that will grow. So if you look back, probably on Mars blog, my own, hi Shawnee, hi, good morning, um, Leanne's blog, and I mean anybody that's been around for a couple of years, you will see that we blogged about nothingness. <laughs> Stupid, but listen, Seinfeld built a show about nothing and it was wildly popular. So you can blog about nothing. You're blogging about something, just post some photos and post what you're thinking about it. Maybe you have a pet that you love and you could take practice on that pet 
and take a lot of photos and then post about it. And it gives people a reason to connect with you and it endears them to you when you post about your personal life or things that you enjoy. So um, some people are really hesitant to do that. They don't want to share too much, but I find the more I put myself out there, the more it helps my business because it gives people uh, a way to connect with you. Or you might say something that like, oh yeah, I love my dog too. Or, oh, I have chickens and, or I've always loved chickens and then they can connect with you on a different level. You can blog about your family. You can blog about, um, Leanne has a blog post about gloves that she had that she liked and a Starbucks drink. I mean, really, it can be about anything. And Mara says it's that then people feel like they know you. And I've gone to weddings. I remember very, very early on, I would go to weddings and people would come up to me and ask me how somebody in my family was or what was going on. And I was always like, how do they know that? <laughs> oh, because I blogged it. And then they would say, I feel like I know you already, which is exactly what I'm going for. Jody says she's done before and after edits and blogging family tips. That's good. <laughs> Pam. Thank you. Uh, good light. Thank you. <laughs> Taryn posts a few of her favorite things. Yeah, post about what you love. Um, Heather says before and after is a good suggestion. Whatever it is you're learning and then people will say, well, I don't want to blog because my photos aren't good yet or they're not where I want them to be. But you, you have to go for progress over perfection because it's going to be a while before you love your photos. So you just have to post something. Um, just be proud of what you have and post it and people will be endeared to you. Also, you the sooner you start, the better. And the reason is people love to go on the journey with you. So you're starting out posting photos that are just, eh, right, okay. And then you're progressively getting better and they love that. Why do you think The Biggest Loser is such a huge hit on TV? It's because of the transformation and the journey. So you go along with these people from the beginning of their journey through this incredible transformation and people love it because they can connect with that struggle. So uh, don't wait to post photos that are perfect. Post what you're working on now and let people come along that journey with you. Do you guys have any other quick thoughts or suggestions about that? And uh, my other tip for today, I was editing a boudoir session this morning for a friend of mine that does boudoir. And, oh, Jennifer says that uh, that's the Sigma version of the 70 to 200 weighs just over three pounds, right? Which is very similar to the Nikon version. Why is the Tamron so much lighter? Hmm. I'm very curious about that. Okay, so back to the boudoir I was editing this morning for a friend of mine who shoots boudoir and we work on editing together. And she was asking me how to encourage someone when they have low self-esteem. Most people do not like themselves in photos and they'll say things like, oh, I don't like that side or, oh, they'll pick themselves apart. So a couple of tips for that is to take a really killer shot and show them how beautiful they are. That's one thing. And sometimes that's enough. People will see themselves on the back of your camera and think, wow, I didn't realize that looks good and they love it. That's at the at the easy end of the spectrum. <laughs> Some people, when you show them the back of the camera, they'll start picking apart something like, oh, I don't like my profile, or can you move my arm, or can you do this? And then you take a shot and you show them how to pose and you teach them, and then they're okay. And then there are some people, and in the case of this boudoir, this, was, uh, this woman was just very, very hard on herself. So when that happens, I approach it a couple of different ways. Sometimes if the person goes on and on and on and on and on and on, and now I use humor and everything, I'll be like, okay, enough, I get it, you're not crazy about yourself, but I want you to find one thing, I want you to tell me one thing that you love about your physical self. So I will force them to find something that they love and then I'm going to focus on it and I'll make jokes about it all day. They will struggle with this. And you know, some people use self-deprecating humor. And, and to, to a degree, that's it's funny, but then again, it's like enough. So in order to loosen them up, I'll say, okay, I want you to tell me one thing that you love about yourself, even if it's silly, and then they'll hesitate. And they, you know, like they're thinking, they're thinking, and I'll lean forward and I'll say, do you want to know what mine is? Do you want to know what I love about myself? And then they're like, yeah, of course. And I'll turn and I'll say, look, I have nice ears. I can wear my hair up like this because I have good ears. Praise God for that because I can't change it. 
and they'll laugh, you know. And so all day I'll be making comments about my ears. I'll be like, look, I don't want to brag, but but those ears. And it's funny, you know, so I say to them, it doesn't have to be something that you would, uh, I guess, normally point out that you love. It can be something kind of strange. And I had one woman tell me once that she loved her ankles. And I was like, hey, you got killer ankles, so way to own it, right? So you should... Um, First of all, be prepared to identify something you love about yourself so that you can share it with her. And I say her because typically this is women we're dealing with with the low self-esteem. I read an article recently that said, when men pass themselves in a mirror, they pause and take a long time to look because they're like, oh wow, look, I look good. And they're looking for all of the good things. But when women do that, they pick apart the bad things. And because, remember yesterday I said, what you focus on, you will feel, and what you focus on grows. So focus on the positive. Hey, I have really nice ears. There are a lot of things I don't like about my appearance, but why would I want to talk about them? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. I ignore them so they go away. Just focus on my ears. Okay, I think that's all for today. Unless you have any quick comments or suggestions, we talked about lenses, we talked about blogging, and also a tip for helping people with their self-esteem. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks.